Hello, my name is Jimmy and welcome to the 2021 Kia Seltos. This is the top trim with the turbo motor. So let's give it a shot. No traffic, a little bit of delay. Oh, that's loud. <laughs> that's not bad, that's actually quite fun. Zero to 60 comes in at 7.3 seconds. It's, well, quick enough for what you need for this class of vehicle. And I think it's plenty fast for what you're actually looking for. Because under the hood, there's a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine making 175 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. And that torque is what really propels you forward. You can just feel that surge. It actually has really good pickup and allows me to accelerate with ease. Let's put on sport mode, let's try that again. A little bit of brake torque, it's dual clutch. Definitely didn't like that. <laughs> All right, let's drive it a little bit more sensibly. So what is the Kia Seltos? If we're taking a look at the Kia lineup, there's a vast amount of crossovers. From largest to smallest, we have the Telluride, which is the large three-row SUV. Then we have the Sorento, which is a slightly smaller, but still a three-row SUV. Then you got a Sportage. And then below that, we have this, the Seltos. Underneath this, we of course have the Soul as well as the Nero. The Nero and the Soul doesn't really classify as a crossover because they don't have all-wheel drive, but they are hide riding. I mean, it's up to you, whatever you want to consider them as. In any case, the Seltos is basically the smallest SUV in their entire lineup. It's based off the Hyundai Kona, but they stretched it every single way. It's longer, it's wider, it's taller, and the wheelbase is longer as well, which actually translates to more interior volume. But before we get into that, let's talk about the outside. The Seltos is a very good looking machine overall. The front end is actually really nice. I like the headlamp design on this SX trim. These LEDs are just bright and fantastic. And they have auto high beam. This accent LED strip goes all the way across. There is a small brick in the center, but it's very distinctive. LED fog lights a little bit below and really nice aggressive front fascia. On the side, we have pretty good 18 inch wheels. They're quite complex in its looks, but they look good and fit the vehicle very well. On the side panel, there's a little bit of molding and just to accentuate that it is an SUV. What I do like from the side, it's just this little kick on the rear. It just shows off this rear glass a little bit more. And above that, this small, small part, but it acts as a cool factor of the Seltos. The trailing edge actually just goes to a point instead. It's cool. It's something that's unique and definitely different. On the back end, I have LED tail lamps here. There are LED for the running lamp, the brake lamp, but not the turn signal itself. And then lower down, we have really, really fake exhaust tips. These don't even go through to the exhaust itself. They're just here for styling. Something that's super surprising is just the amount of volume inside. Opening up this manual tailgate and it reveals 26.5 cubic feet. That's huge. It's bigger than the Sportage or Sportage, depending on where you're from. And if you fold the rear seats down, that's 62.8 cubic feet. That's a huge amount of space for a small SUV. What's more is I like the implementation here. The false floor, you can move this down to carry a little bit more. Or when you need to fold down those rear seats, that cargo cover, it can still underneath as well. Definitely a good design. Moving on to those rear seats, they're relatively comfortable. I got plenty of headroom, legroom, and it's actually a decent place to be. I also have heated seats back here. Definitely a nice touch on those cold winter months. As for the front seats, well, these are aggressively bolstered. Unlike full sport seats that you see like in performance SUVs, they don't fully squish you. I still have quite a bit of room to play with, but it's enough room on the sides to, well, accommodate people of different sizes, but still good enough to hold me in. So I'm in the seat and not just on top of it. And these, they're heated as well as cooled. Something that you don't even find in some other higher end manufacturers. Definitely a nice touch. In front, I got a leather steering wheel, really good tactile buttons on it. I do like that. And behind, a very useful instrument cluster. Two analog dials on the outside and a digital screen in the center. The screen itself shows me plenty of information from infotainment to trip to speed. 
issues at all. And when you change it from normal drive mode to sport drive mode, it actually changes a little bit as well, where I actually have a little light that tells me if I'm on the higher end on the rev range. It's not really a shift light as it doesn't indicate when I need to shift. Sitting neatly on top of the dash is the heads up display. Unfortunately, it's not the good heads up display that projects onto the windshield, but a little plexiglass screen. It slides out when it needs to, it's fine for what you need, but it's just not at the right height. Unfortunately for this specific car, well, looks like whoever was driving this previously was just a little too aggressive on it, and there's a lot of scratches on that little piece of plexi there. Good thing is we can hide it away with a button, and that just slides right under, and I'm just able to use the cluster as I need. Popping out in the center of the dash is our infotainment system. The Kia and Hyundai products always has a really good infotainment system. There's wired Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. I mean, it has everything that you need in a very simple, easy to use system. Dedicated volume and tuning knob to just lessen confusion. And I really like the dedicated row of media buttons. I can press radio, I can press media, whatever I need to get to places just easily. And there's a dedicated custom button. So I can press that to go to my CarPlay, or as I have it set up right now, to my ambient lighting settings. Below that, we have our climate control. The climate control we have in here is just a single zone, which is fine. I know there are people that's looking for dual zone climate controls, but single zone is, well, all you really need anyways. One thing I definitely do like is this auto button. There's three stages, so I can have auto low, medium, or high. Have you ever been into a vehicle when you press auto and just cranks up the fan all the way? Well, this definitely mitigates that. Definitely like that feature. Underneath that, we have a Qi wireless charger, USB ports, pretty standard affair, and a drive mode wheel. That's how we can control the engine from the normal, smart, and sport modes. Speaking of the engine, as said, it's a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes a good amount of power at 175 horse and a very good amount of torque with 195 pound feet. The biggest letdown here isn't so much the engine, but the transmission. No, it's not a CVT. Though a CVT would actually make this a little bit smoother because the dual clutch that's in this, the seven speed dual clutch, it's fine when you're up and running and if you wanna drive it a little bit more aggressively, but when you're in traffic, when you're just driving around town, and especially if you're parking, this transmission is definitely a big fault. The driveway at my parents' house is relatively steep. And when I put it into reverse and try to back up onto that driveway, well, it wasn't a great experience because it felt like what's almost like a brand new driver learning how to drive manual. It felt like the car was on and off the clutch because it didn't know exactly what it needed to do. That being said, you don't have to opt for this engine and transmission combo. Every trim other than the SX model, you can get the base two liter four cylinder no turbos, no fuss. It makes 146 horsepower and 132 pound-feet of torque. The only thing is it's made it to a continuously variable transmission. So you got that to deal with. So the sad thing is you're either left with a continuously variable transmission that is really good at stop and go traffic or a seven speed dual clutch automatic that's, well, not great in traffic, but good once you're on the way. All right, let's pull over here. Overall, the Seltos is a great vehicle. It truly is. There's a lot of good points about it. The styling is beautiful. There's a lot of interior volume. It's huge in here. There's plenty of room for you, your kids, your spouse, everything that you need inside one vehicle. The biggest letdown for this is that transmission. Is that gonna be something that you should consider? Well, it varies. If you live in San Francisco and you only drive in rush hour traffic, yeah, Definitely something to consider because that dual clutch is not going to go well when you're going up and down those hills. You're just not going to have a good time. Maybe consider that base engine, the two liter. It's plenty powerful for a vehicle of this size with a base price of 22,000 US or 23,000 Canadian. And it tops out at 29,000 US or 32,600 Canadian. The Seltos is an amazing bargain. You get a lot of value here. And that's really where the Celto stands. It's an amazing value for money. Sure, there are some cheaper materials, like in the cabin, this door card, not great. The dash, also not great, but that's okay. The areas that you'll be touching, it's fine. 
it's good enough materials there. You're not paying premium money. And that's exactly why the Seltos, well, it's definitely something you should consider if you're in the market. The biggest competitors, the Mazda CX-30 and the Nissan Rogue Sport or the Qashqai, depending on where you're from. If you're looking for a subcompact crossover that's feature rich, this is definitely the one to go for. If you want that driving experience, then definitely take a look at that CX-30. The CX-30 will have a turbo engine, 250 horsepower, 300 foot pounds of torque. It's definitely more than what you get in the 1.6 here. In any case, thank you so much for watching this video. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you want to see more. If you have any questions on the Seltos, leave them in the comment section down below. And we'll catch you next time. Take care.